A finite geometry is any geometric system that has only a finite number of points. The familiar Euclidean geometry is not finite, because a Euclidean line contains infinitely many points. A geometry based on the graphics displayed on a computer screen, where the pixels are considered to be the points, would be a finite geometry. While there are many systems that could be called finite geometries, attention is mostly paid to the finite projective and affine spaces because of their regularity and simplicity. Other significant types of finite geometry are finite Mobius or inversive planes and Lake air planes, which are examples of a general type called Benz planes, and their higher dimensional analogues such as higher finite inversive geometries. Finite geometries may be constructed via linear algebra. Starting from vector spaces over a finite field, the affine and projective planes so constructed are called Galois geometries. Finite geometries can also be defined purely axiomatically. Most common finite geometries are Galois geometries. Since any finite projective space of dimension 3 or greater is isomorphic to a projective space over a finite field, however, dimension 2 has affine and projective planes that are not isomorphic to Galois geometries, namely the non Sargassian planes. Similar results hold for other kinds of finite geometries, finite affine and projective planes. The following remarks apply only to finite planes. There are two main kinds of finite plane geometry, affine and projective. In an affine plane, the normal sense of parallel lines applies. In a projective plane, by contrast, any two lines intersect at a unique point, so parallel lines do not exist. Both finite affine plane geometry and finite projective plane geometry may be described by fairly simple axioms. An affine plane geometry is a non-empty set X, along with a non-empty collection L of subsets of X, such that, for every two distinct points, there is exactly one line that contains both points. Playfair's axiom Given a line and a point not on, there exists exactly one line containing such that, there exists a set of four points, no three of which belong to the same line. The last axiom ensures that the geometry is not trivial, while the first two specify the nature of the geometry. The simplest affine plane contains only four points, it is called the affine plane of order two. Since no three are collinear, any pair of points determines a unique line, and so this plane contains six lines. It corresponds to a tetrahedron where non-intersecting edges are considered parallel, or a square where not only opposite sides, but also diagonals are considered parallel. More generally, a finite affine plane of order n has n2 points and n2 plus n lines. Each line contains n points, and each point is on n plus 1 lines. The affine plane of order 3 is known as the Hess configuration. A projective plane geometry is a non-empty set X, along with a non-empty collection L of subsets of X, such that, for every two distinct points, there is exactly one line that contains both points. The intersection of any two distinct lines contains exactly one point. There exists a set of four points, no three of which belong to the same line. An examination of the first two axioms shows that they are nearly identical, except that the roles of points and lines have been interchanged. This suggests the principle of duality for projective plane geometries, meaning that any true statement valid in all these geometries remains true if we exchange points for lines and lines for points. The smallest geometry satisfying all three axioms contains seven points. In this simplest of the projective planes, there are also seven lines. Each point is on three lines, and each line contains three points. This particular projective plane is sometimes called the Fano plane. If any of the lines is removed from the plane, along with the points on that line, the resulting geometry is the affine plane of order 2. The Fano plane is called the projective plane of order 2 because it is unique. In general, the projective plane of order n has n2 plus n plus 1 points and the same number of lines. Each line contains n plus 1 points. 
and each point is on n plus 1 lines. A permutation of the Fano plane 7 points that carries collinear points to collinear points is called a collineation of the plane. The full collineation group is of order 168 and is isomorphic to the group PSL PSL, which in this special case is also isomorphic to the general linear group GL PGL. Order of planes A finite plane of order n is one such that each line has n points, or such that each line has n plus 1 points. One major open question in finite geometry is, is the order of a finite plane always a prime power? This is conjectured to be true. Affine and projective planes of order n exist whenever n is a prime power. By using affine and projective planes over the finite field with n equals pk elements, planes not derived from finite fields also exist, but all known examples have order a prime power. The best general result to date is the bruck riser theorem of 1949, which states, if n is a positive integer of the form 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 2 and n is not equal to the sum of two integer squares, then n does not occur as the order of a finite plane. The smallest integer that is not a prime power and not covered by the bruck riser theorem is 10. 10 is of the form 4k plus 2, but it is equal to the sum of squares 12 plus 32. The non-existence of a finite plane of order 10 was proven in a computer-assisted proof that finished in 1989. See for details. The next smallest number to consider is 12, for which neither a positive nor a negative result has been proved. History individual examples can be found in the work of Thomas Pennington Kirkman and a systematic development of finite projective geometry as given by von Stout. The first axiomatic treatment of finite projective geometry was developed by the Italian mathematician Gino Fano, in his work on proving the independence of the set of axioms for projective n space that he developed. He considered a finite three-dimensional space with 15 points, 35 lines and 15 planes, in which each line had only three points on it. The planes in this space consisted of seven points and seven lines and although they were already known, they are now called Fano planes. Finite spaces are three or more dimensions. For some important differences between finite plane geometry and the geometry of higher dimensional finite spaces, see axiomatic projective space. For a discussion of higher dimensional finite spaces in general, see, for instance, the works of J.W.P. Hirschfeld. The study of these higher dimensional spaces has many important applications in advanced mathematical theories. Each two distinct points P and Q are in exactly one line. Veblen's axiom. If A, B, C, D are distinct points and the lines through A and C D meet, then so do the lines through A and B D. Any line has at least three points on it. The last axiom eliminates reducible cases that can be written as a disjoint union of projective spaces together with two point lines joining any two points in distinct projective spaces. More abstractly, it can be defined as an incidence structure consisting of a set P of points, a set L of lines, and an incidence relation I stating which points lie on which lines. Obtaining a finite projective space requires one more axiom. The set of points P is a finite set. In any finite projective space, each line contains the same number of points and the order of the space is defined as one less than this common number. A subspace of the projective space is a subset X, such that any line containing two points of X is a subset of X. The full space and the empty space are always subspaces. The geometric dimension of the space is said to be n if that is the largest number for which there is a strictly ascending chain of subspaces of this form. Algebraic construction A standard algebraic construction of systems satisfies these axioms. For a division ring D construct a dimensional vector space over D, let P be the one-dimensional subspaces and L the two-dimensional subspaces of this vector space. Incidence is containment. 
If D is finite then it must be a finite field GF, since by Wedder Burns' little theorem all finite division rings are fields. In this case, this constructor produces a finite projective space. Furthermore, if the geometric dimension of a projective space is at least 3 then there is a division ring from which the space can be constructed in this manner. Consequently, all finite projective spaces of geometric dimension at least 3 are defined over finite fields. A finite projective space defined over such a finite field has q plus 1 points on a line, so the two concepts of order coincide. Such a finite projective space is denoted by PG, where PG stands for projective geometry. N is the geometric dimension of the geometry and Q is the size of the finite field used to construct the geometry. In general, the number K dimensional subspaces of PG is given by the product, which is a Gaussian binomial coefficient, a Q analog of a binomial coefficient. Classification of finite projective spaces by geometric dimension Dimension 0. The space is a single point and is so degenerate that it is usually ignored. Dimension 1. All points lie on the unique line, called a projective line. Dimension 2. There are at least two lines, and any two lines meet. A projective space for n equals 2 is a projective plane. These are much harder to classify, as not all of them are isomorphic with a PG. The de Sargassian planes satisfy de Sargassian's theorem in a projective planes over finite fields, but there are many non de Sargassian planes. Dimension at least 3. Two non intersecting lines exist. The Webel and Young theorem states in the finite case that every projective space of geometric dimension N3 is isomorphic with a PG. The n-dimensional projective space over some finite field GF. The smallest projective 3 space The smallest three-dimensional projective space is over the field GF and is denoted by PG. It has 15 points, 35 lines, and 15 planes. Each plane contains seven points and seven lines. Each line contains three points. As geometries, these planes are isomorphic to the Fano plane. Every point is contained in seven lines. Every pair of distinct points are contained in exactly one line and every pair of distinct planes intersects in exactly one line. In 1892, Gino Fano was the first to consider such a finite geometry. Kirkman's schoolgirl problem PG can arise as a solution of Kirkman's schoolgirl problem, which states, 15 school girls walk each day in five groups of three. Arrange the girls' walk for a week so that in that time, each pair of girls walks together in a group just once. There are 35 different combinations for the girls to walk together. There are also seven days of the wick and three girls in each group. Two of the seven non-isomorphic solutions to this problem can provide a visual representation of the Fano 3 space. Some diagrams for this problem can be found at. Each color represents the day of the week. The definition of a Fano space says that each line is on three points. The figure represents this showing that there are three points for every line. This is the basis for the answer to the schoolgirl problem. This figure is then rotated seven times. There are five different lines for each day, multiplied by seven and the result is 35. Then, there are 15 points, and there are also seven starting lines on each point. This then gives a representation of the Fano 3 space, PG.